pattern, discernible pattern of Democratic officials seemingly trying to convince you, the public, to not believe what you saw and what you heard with your eyes and with your ears. Right now, the Democratic Party is in free fall. Biden's presidency, his campaign, even, it's rats, actual rats, fleeing from a sinking ship. And it rem- it reminds me of the the song Don't Drink the Water by leftist band Dave Matthews. At the end, it says, and I live with my justice, and I live with my greedy need. Oh, I live with no mercy, and I live with my frenzied feeding, and I live with my hatred, and I live with my jealousy. Oh, I live with the notion that I don't need anyone but me. Don't drink the water. Don't drink the water. There's blood in the water. Don't drink the water. Right now, there is blood in the water. The sharks are out. They're coming for Biden. Here we have from Bloomberg. House. Democrats consider demanding Biden withdraw from the race. The dam has broken. Everyone is now feeling emboldened. They feel unrestrained from the lie that they thought that they were forced to tell. We will get into that in a few moments. But everyone is letting their hair down, freed from the shackles of what the left might think of them. So now all of a sudden it is. Nothing but face-saving tactics, really. Jake Tapper is trying to play the centrist, being like, they're trying to convince you. Do not believe your eyes and your ears. Okay, Orwell, calm down a bit. It's like Jake Tapper forgot that the internet is a thing and everything that happens on the internet stays on the internet. Dozens of Democratic lawmakers are considering signing a letter demanding President Joe Biden withdraw from the race, a senior party official has said, as panic mounts that he'll cost them control of Congress because down ballot, everyone is at risk. If you're a senator or you're in the House or if you're a governor or whoever, if People are turned off of Biden. People aren't necessarily going to go through the ballot and and select. They might just stay home. I'm not voting for Trump, but I'm not voting for Biden. And so everyone might panic or everyone one goes, I'm going to vote for Trump. And then it's just Republican down ballot. So Democrats at large, not just for the presidency, but for at large, they're suffering. They're they're very well may be a very rude awakening. But with that being said, do not let off the gas. Don't think, not even for a second, don't think, well, you know, everyone else is already going to vote for Donald Trump. So, I mean, I can I can just like, you know, sleep in that day. No, you don't get to. It doesn't matter if the polls say Trump has a 99 point lead. You still get up and you still go to the polls And you bring all your friends and family to do it as well. Because it's only a a whatever percentage lead. If you follow through with that lead, you let up off the gas, you know, the tortoise and the hare. Biden is rapidly losing support of Democratic lawmakers and candidates concerned the 81-year-old's continued candidacy would lead to a Republican sweep of Washington and an unchecked Donald Trump presidency. Oh, heavens. Doesn't that sound amazing? An unchecked Donald Trump presidency? Let's say he got two more Supreme Court justices in there. What if he had five of the nine, which they're, they're saying in the next four years, two more are going to retire. He might have five of the nine. Oh, buddy. I mean, if he had five, he should go, hey, listen, Justice uh, Thomas, I didn't do so good with, with Amy Coney Barrett. Do you, do you think you could pick them? Who do you have in mind who's just like you? I mean, that would be fantastic. Democrats running for re-election in traditionally safe Democratic districts 
are circulating the letter, the official said, underscoring how widespread the panic is within the party. The White House earlier Wednesday denied a New York Times report that the president is considering bowing out of the contest just four months before the election. But congressional Democrats raised concern that Biden's presence at the top of the ticket is a liability. And that is why they are now saying that Kamala is top of the ticket. And they're wondering, but who's, who's going to be the VP for Kamala? And, and the reason why, if anyone needs to replace Joe Biden, it has to be Kamala. Because, well, she, she is their DEI hire. And you may as well make it the first black Indian woman president. But also, there's campaign finance rules. So... A lot of the money that went to Joe Biden, it can't go to Kamala. But some of the money that went to that the ca- campaign, it can go to her. She's the only one that has any chance of keeping any of that money. And money's a big deal. Donald Trump seems to have oodles of it. But we'll talk about money in a moment. Controlling even one chamber of Congress would give Democrats the ability to negotiate with a Trump White House on the approaching 2025 battles over tax cuts and the debt ceiling. Democrats' best chance had been to win the White House, but there's concern that Biden's performance will depress Democrat turnout. Only one sitting House Democrat, Lloyd Dogg of Texas, has publicly called for Biden to step aside, but several others have distanced themselves from the president, but also Marianne Williams, who's running as an independent or a libertarian, Whatever. Williams? Williamson? Whatever. She's not important. She's also called. But then again, she's running as third party, so her opinion doesn't necessarily matter. I reject the notion that this was a bad night and everything's okay. Representative Mike Quigley, an Illinois Democrat, told Bloomberg News, this was a bad night and it's a serious situation that has to be dealt with. Charles Meyer, Signum Global Advice Chairman and Founder, a top donor to Biden's campaign, said during an interview on Bloomberg Surveillance that events are moving much faster against the president than he expected. I think they got probably another five to six days, he said. Meyer said that he was with Biden Friday night and the president was very together and very alert. So he needs to show that to the American people. It's likely a lie, or he was on his meds. We know that Biden, much like Formula One tires, and I'm a big Formula One racing fan, so Formula One tires, there's a working window. Your tires are too hot, they don't work. If they're too cold, they don't work. It's a small operating window to get maximum traction and life expectancy out of that tire. Yes, I hear you, but I think we need to box. Tires are done. Biden's window of operation to to get the best performance, the best lap time is in the middle of the day. That's it. It's very sliver, small sliver. Like, he turns off at 4 p.m. So, key Democrat donors threaten to pull the plug if Biden doesn't resign, as furious party insiders reveal worst fears about ailing president have now been confirmed. How stupid do they think we are? Um, is, is that a real question? Like an actual real, how, how, very. We think you're very stupid. We, reality has a right side bias, a right wing bias, and it has for, it has for quite some time now. And I, I don't know, I'm, I'm staggered. Uh, they're like, oh my God, the White House tricked us. Can you believe it? They totally pulled the wool right over our eyes. And now, and now it's been, it's been lifted. We can see the dementia. We are so, we, we, we have been betrayed. What are you talking about? We have the conservatives, Republicans, conservatives, anybody really with eyes and ears and a functioning brain. We have been shouting since 2019. 2019. You know, all the, all the times Joe Biden's fallen up the stairs, fallen down the stairs, fallen off of his bike, fall, just fallen on stage, wandered and stumbled, drew my shop and shop and pressure, got a calf care. Like, we have been like, hey, yo, something's not right. 
him shitting his guts out while he was at the Vatican. And never, you know, as a quick aside, everyone's like, oh, he's, you know, he's pooping. Yes, probably. Like at the Vatican. They were like, oh, yeah, he pooped everywhere. Likely. Because old people poop. But if he is on amphetamines, like ADHD medication, that makes you poop. It really does. The poop is come fast and furious. And if you don't have the ability to hold it and fuck it real quick, you're going to shit your guts out. That's how that's going to go. So how stupid do we think they are? Very. Or they're just lying. They're trying to save face. Growing Democratic uproar over President Joe Biden's shockingly feeble debate performance on Thursday night appears to be turning into a full-blown uh, party revolt. For Biden's own good and the good of the country, he should step aside immediately, major Democratic donor and former hedge fund manager Whitney Tilson told the Daily Mail. The fact that it is now being, you know, a few days and Biden has done nothing to reassure us confirms my worst fears. So the money's being pulled. Money's going to dry up. Joe Biden has a, a very serious, very important, pre-recorded, not at all live, intimate uh, interview with George Stephanopoulos coming out on July 5th. And because it's not live, because it is pre-recorded, and because you know nobody else is really going to be in there, you know it's going to be edited. It's going to be edited up the wazoo. So this George Snuffleupagus, he's going to say, well, Mr. President, easy, generic, benign question that you already know the answer to. And then Joe Biden will go, wubba dubba 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 mumble mumble Alzheimer's. And then the editor will just go, snip, cut that part right out. And then so behind the scenes, Snuffleupagus will say, hey, you want to, Want to take a breath? Want to take a moment and try that one more time? And Joe Biden will take a breath and read his cue cards and go, okay. And then, and then give some semblance of an answer. And the editors will keep that in. So I suspect on the 5th or whatever, whenever that comes out, that's going to be a, a relatively really good performance. But it's going to be edited up the wazoo. I mean, most of the time, all of the time, I have all kinds of nonsense when I make these videos. I have wild ADHD tangents. I have, I have all kinds of things that I say. I rail against YouTube half the time. I'm shouting about all kinds of things. It's a lunatic. If, 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 if I uploaded one of these videos uncut and unedited, I'd be on some kind of list. Definitely a no-fly list, but because it's all edited, much like what that's going to be, you guys, you guys never see it. So, where do we go from there? Breaking! Uh, Joe Biden told key ally he is considering if he should drop out. President Joe Biden told a close ally that he doesn't think he can salvage his campaign after his train wreck debate with Donald Trump last week. It's the first real sign that the president is considering dropping out of the race amid calls for a new candidate. See, everyone is emboldened. Everyone no longer fears, you know, the left's retaliation. Like before, if you were a lefty and you said something about Joe Biden, oh, maybe he's not quite there. Maybe he should step aside. The left would have canceled you. They would have absolutely canceled you. And so that, that's what kept you in line. But now they're all standing up and going, I am Spartacus. You should step down. Inside growing turmoil at the White House as leadership tries to get handle on staff who are freaking the F out after Biden mishap. Like, it's bad. It is so bad. And that is why everyone needs to go for the kill shot. You know, when a, uh, like a boa or some kind of large snake, an anaconda, you know, this anaconda don't or whatever, as it's, as it's, Coiled around its prey, and the prey wiggles, it squeezes a little bit more. Well, MAGA right now. So those those folks who want America to succeed and grow and be strong right now is an anaconda. It's an anaconda that do. And its prey 
is the Democrats right now. It's praise Joe Biden and they're wiggling and they're squiggling and they're worming around. And, you know, it's the time to squeeze and constrict it until it's time to eat it. And that that final constriction is is voting day. That's when it happens. It happens voting day. So do not stop until then. Everyone get up and everyone go out. And make sure that vote happens. So the White House is struggling to calm the storm of outrage from Joe Biden's debate performances as Democratic lawmakers call for the president to exit the race. And the White House staff are freaking the F out. White House Chief of Staff Jeff Zainz, Zainz, whatever, is scheduled to hold an all-hands-on-deck staff call at 12.30 Wednesday, which has, by the time this recording comes out, has already happened. And they're like, no, it's fine, it's fine. The polls aren't really that bad. Margin of error stuff, we only dropped a bit. We we got this, we got this. So Wednesday, to pump the pump up disillusioned staff and reassure them that Biden will remain the nominee. The move came to preempt what is expected to be bad polling news for the president. They are freaking out. It's so late. It's July. Mega month. Also, my birthday. July 7th, my birthday. Streaming on Rumble for Saturday and Off the Rails. That's my show. Be there on Rumble. Subscribe to me there. It's going to be a good time. Just wanted to throw that in there. But yes, it's already July, right? The election is a couple months from now. Like there, there is like no time to waste. Literally every minute matters in this. And they are just, they're like, well, you know, Biden's going to see in a few days. A few days? Holy cow. Every day we are closer to election day is, you know, means every minute becomes more and more valuable. So they they are freaking they're freaking out. CNN segment discussing Biden's ailing misstep turns into a shouting match. You have two, like the the chick in the middle. She's obvious. She's the CNN. But then you got the two, the two Biden contributors, the two lefties. They're shouting at one another because it's all panicked. One guy's like, "No, no, it's totally gonna be fine." The other guy's like, "Are you nuts? It's time to panic." And you're just being like, oh, it's fine. He's like, why are you shouting at me? Like, it's getting really, really crazy now. So now we're going to finish with this. Media buried Joe Biden's mental state to appease liberal Twitter sphere and avoid helping Trump. And it's been like this since, oh God, at least 2019. According to new internal polling, American voters have lost faith in Joe Biden after Thursday's debate, which during he often appeared dazed, fragile, and unable to speak coherently. He also looked really pale. A lot of the lefties are like, that's the bad lighting. CNN did that on purpose. That's the bad lighting. It wasn't bad lighting. It was just he looked pale because he's old as time. And so then his next speech, they. They they made him the orange man. They they covered him with tan, so he was freakishly orange. And everyone's like, uh, what game are you playing here? So Open Labs reported substantial declines for Biden in swing states Tuesday, projecting an electoral map of 333 to 205 in favor of Donald Trump. Many are saying that is a psyop to make you want to take your foot off the gas, but you won't do that because you are a boa. And you won't stop squeezing until election day is over. Like, look at this map. That's a lot of red. <laughs> That's a lot of red on that map, but you're not going to stop. You're going to keep going. The debate should not have been much of a surprise. Biden has looked frail and confused for much of his presidency. Thursday was more of the same. So why are polls just now reflecting concern over Biden's mental acuity? Quite simply, the corporate press duped Americans at large. Only some Americans, many Americans, some, at least half, half the country knew what was up. Half the country was asleep. And they're like, no, CNN would never lie to me. MSNBC is my friend. For months, like months, years, 
literal years, not this four months, years, actual freaking years. Legacy news outlets downplayed warnings of Biden's declining cognitive state. Rarely would you see CNN or ABC play a clip of Biden's repeated blunders. Most news networks and uh, newspapers dismissed a lengthy piece from the Wall Street Journal in June about M Biden's mental state as a right-wing talking fallacy. Wall Street Journal says, hey, something's not quite right with Biden. CNN goes, that's just a right-wing talking point. It's wrong. It's fake news. And the fact checkers go, fact check. And then you're like, wait a minute. Why, why are you, you fact checking that? As, as, if, as if it's fake. Like, he's obviously too much time under pressure. Like, what? Consequently, voters across the country were taken aback when Biden struggled to complete his thoughts, spoke about non-existing trillionaires, and lamented that in-laws, spouses, brothers, and sisters are raping American women. Thankfully, <laughs> they're not. Yeah, when he was like, oh, yeah, abortion is, um, is, is important because, you know, sometimes there's incest. You know, when a, when a woman rapes another woman, these sisters are raping each other and getting pregnant. Oh, I see. You've watched The Acolyte. Two women having a baby because of the force. They've, they've scissored the baby into existence. Semaphore journalist Ben Smith sought to find answers about why the press largely ignored Biden's mental condition ahead of the debate knowing they had access to the same information and videos OutKick, Fox News, and a few other outlets had cited. Well, I mean, myself and the quartering and Tim Pool and, what, Benny Johnson and Steven Crowder and all of us fine fellas, uh, we had that too, and we, were, we have been reporting on it. So, um, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Former. New York Times executive editor Jill Abramson admitted to Smith that corporate journalism, but uh, uh, corporate journalism would rather bury the truth than tell the truth if it benefits Donald Trump, and that happens because the media, the establishment media, is the enemy of the people, and you can in no way trust them. They will lie to you. Operation Mockingbird never ended. Do not forget that. Ever. Operation Mockingbird never ended. Obviously, the president's decline was a super hard story to report, even by those who wanted to get it. Like the Wall Street Journal, their story did not deliver using mostly named GOP sources. So they like dismissed it out of hand. They're like, eh, nah. at some point, I'm sure at some point, the media was honest. How far back would you have to go? I, I don't even know. But I do think if enough reporters had pushed, the story was reportable. But reporters are leftist, mostly, and spineless. And they care about what Twitter thinks. I worry that too many journalists didn't try to get the story because they did not want to be accused of helping elect Donald Trump. I get that. What? I get that? Why do you get that? That should be ungettable because they're like, yeah, too many journalists didn't want to be honest or do journalism. They didn't want to follow the journalistic ethics that they said that they would do. Um, I understand. What? They didn't want to follow their journalistic ethics because of ideological reasons. You get that? No, no, I'm sorry. That doesn't fly. But this is no excuse for abandoning our first duty, which is to report the truth and hold power accountable. That's what I'm saying. President Biden should be held accountable for his obvious lapses of mental acuity, even if there are periods of lucidity. Sound familiar? Former New York Times opinion editor Adam Rubenstein, Rubenstein, Ruben, it doesn't matter, penned an article for The Atlantic in February in which he explained how the paper did not want to report on the Hunter Biden laptop story, which was first reported by the New York Post 
out of fear it would hinder Biden's election efforts that November. Was it truly unsubstantiated, as the pep paper kept saying? Rubenstein asked rhetorically. At the time, it had been substantiated, however, unusually, by Rudy G Giuliani. Many of my colleagues were clearly worried that lending credence to the laptop story could hurt the electoral prospects of Joe Biden and the Democrats. Journalistic ethics are, they don't exist anymore. You, they wipe their ass with it. They wipe their leftist bums with their journalistic ethics. And I always say that um, a liberal or, or a progressive, a leftist or whatever, they abandon their principles faster than they can abandon a baby in a dumpster. And we all know how fast they're prepared to abandon a baby, whether it be in a dumpster or just kill it outright. They abandon their principles because it's about power. It's not about ethics or principles or morals or whatever. It's about power, m maintaining power. That's all the left cares about. For the right wants some semblance of like normalcy and decency. They just crave power. And establishment media, leftist media, progressive media, whatever, as you see, they abandon all principles for that power to make sure the 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 power is 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 on their side that they so they can wield it. Speak truth to power? No, that's that's not what they do. But starting from a place of party politics and assessing how a particular story could affect an election isn't journalism. The big press and sorry, the the press and big tech buried the Hunter Biden laptop story in 2020, which polling says would have changed the minds of one in six Biden voters. That that story alone the Hunter Biden laptop story alone, if that was reported openly and honestly, would have changed the election and Donald Trump would have won it. Election interference by the press and by big tech. However, they can't bury the Joe Biden debate story. We all saw it. CNN also admitted on Tuesday that several Washington journalists feared reporting about Biden's age because it would anger the White House Democrats and the liberal Twitter sphere. That's crazy. We don't want we don't want to make Twitter angry. Okay. Sure thing. For CNN, the White House press shop has also been very aggressive and fairly successful in mitigating coverage of concerns over the president's age, said another White House reporter who works for a different publication, berating reporters who bring them reporting about age concerns, bemoaning that it's all anyone writes about, clearly it's not, and often uh, attacking pieces after they run, the reporter told CNN. I think that's left some folks to conclude that these stories are too painful to report or that they should pick their spots more. It's clear that age stories that have angered the White House and liberal Twitter sphere the most. At the core of journalism, the press has two obligations. One, hold the people in power accountable. And two, do not withhold critical information from voters about their country. The media as a whole has failed in its coverage of Joe Biden. In case you needed any more proof, the legacy media is not an accurate source of information ahead of the election. Oh, goodness. What a long video this is, but there is, I don't know, tens, hundreds, God, by this point, thousands of stories coming out about how it, it's now Kamala's turn. The betting odds are for Kamala. Joe Biden is sinking in the polls. Democrats panicking. Democrats panicking. Gretchen Whitmer is pushing hard to get the nomination. Gavin Newsom, he says he doesn't want it, but he's ready just in case. Obama calling for an open convention. Obama saying, you can do it, Joe, but then being a sneaky sneak behind the scenes, being like open convention, and like like RFK. And it's, there's, there's 10,000 stories about this right now. So this one's a little bit long. If you stayed with me, thank you so much. Rumble, rumble, rumble. That's what I got to say. Subscribe to me on Rumble. Follow me there. I live stream there exclusively every Saturday night. I'd like to do a little bit more often. My live streams are basically like this. It's just, uh, 
you know, have friends on, have guests on, sometimes do interviews, go over the news. It's basically like this. If you've ever seen the quartering do a live stream, if you've ever seen Tim Pool do uh, one of his like morning live streams or whatever, where it's just news stories and talking to a camera, that's what it is. Except it's it's fueled with ADHD. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you all, each and every one of you, whether you're on YouTube or on Rumble. Also, follow me on Twitter if you have it at Third Rail Fire. So, you and your beautiful faces, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.